Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. And man, if you guys are looking for an agent, you want to know everything about agents and getting an agent, mm -hmm. today is the day. Absolutely. Vince Libica, commercial agent at DPN Talent Los Angeles, is here, Chuck. Let's, Let's get, get buzz. buzz. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. Guys, our guest is a commercial and youth voiceover agent at one of the top agencies in our industry, DPN Talent, here in Los Angeles. He's got great info to share that's going to help you in your career, and we are so ready to get buzzed with the awesome Vince Labica. Yeah, Vince! You're welcome. Thanks, guys, for having me. Thanks Appreciate it. Here. How are you, buddy? Good. You are doing good? Things are good. Are you calm today? Are you a little nervous <laughs> right? to be on VO Buzz You know what? Weekly? I was a little nervous at first, but, you know, I kind of, I, I we relax We haven't lost now. anyone yet. Yeah. So we, just, we just had a little pre-chat here. You know, <laughs> yeah, right? Cool. We're, we're gonna warmed up a bit. Into it. Yes. Very, very cool, yes. man. So, dude, we're going to get right into it. First of all, we want to say thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, thank you to Jeff and Kama and all the, you know, the people the over there yeah, yeah. yep. sharing us tonight with you um, or sharing you with us tonight. Yes. More better. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, uh, and and for taking the time off, man, to come and share with us and everybody course, out there. Thank you course, so much. It's a long yeah, day for you. So absolutely, we'll man. Appreciate it. Vince a little tired. He's going to go home soon. So we've got to <laughs> make this kind of quick. All good. Uh, I'm going to get right into it, dude, because you, yeah. you, you're going to set some records straight here. Um, first of all, so many people ask, you know, what are the current styles that are popular right now? Reading styles for commercial. Um, can you tell us about that? Um, I mean, right now, I definitely would have to go with, as far as like women, you, you see it on the spec. It's, yeah. you know, the Scarlett Johansson, mm -hmm. Emma Stone, uh, slightly raspy, textured, relatable, and real. That spec comes through, I'd say, 75% of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, for girls that run between the ages of 20 and 35, that's exactly. usually where they want. And it's a lot of times it's the girls really putting nothing on, going in the booth and, just being, themselves. and being raw and real. Yeah, and, exactly. and it's... It's funny how that just it pans out because yeah. that's that's the norm right now. Um, so now, is it like less acting and just more real? Or? It's funny, like even on camera, more on camera commercial actors can pan over into voiceover nowadays just because the their real is they're not overthinking the read. Exactly. They go in, they're they're thinking, you know, I'm gonna read this the best way I can and just feel relatable, you know, you and just be that and that's kind of it's basically. And then you have you have this older guard that's kind of trying to pull back from what they're for 25 years have been doing yeah. mm -hmm. and going into a conversational tone and kind of, you know, you have these announcers that are just like feel odd laying down a read when they're just talking, right, you know, right, and, right. and lo and behold, it's like you have a lot of these guys too. And that probably we were going into our next point maybe about that, but these guys have tons of gravis, tons of depth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you have them read just talking, they still sound cool. Right, you know? right, right. They yeah. still just have, have that cool resonance. Exactly. Yeah. And sometimes them not pushing and not putting anything on really is perfect. Is perfect. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you do get that older, weathered feel, but it's real. But it, in, instead of the yeah. announcer, announcer, instead of announcer right. you get more something real. put on. It's so. just exactly. like life experience. Yeah. Versus, so, yeah. so let's talk about that real quick. So the deep, you know, big, boomy voice versus the regular guy, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Maybe not so regular. Um, <laughs> yeah. Is there a market for both of them right now in the current trends? Of course, of course there is. The spec still comes through on both sides. Yeah, and you still even you even have some specs that will mesh with both of them. You know, you you get that twenty five to thirty or twenty five to forty right in there, right. kind of like right, in, and you get that middle ground where you have some of these guys that yeah, it, it's just the the actor's ability to lay out the read yeah. is going to be completely different. So you have that guy that is totally conversational, probably wouldn't pair up against the guy on a booming voice if it was a you know a deep announcer spec. Right. Yeah, but never, then you yeah. have these guys that are deep announcers that are peeling back, that are sounding conversational nowadays. So they find common ground mm -hmm. in a excellent, sense. Excellent, excellent. So, yeah. And do, it's, you, do you have any... Um, any just like thoughts for for the guy who maybe has that more radio background or that big boomy just natural god-given resonance any thoughts for them about how to sort of strip that away i mean it it is it's something it's like you're reteaching your your what you're normally mm -hmm. want to go to um and i like to maybe refer to it as your vo tool belt 
you know, yep. you want to try to create another tool there. So yeah. you're going to automatically refer to that one tool that you've you've made so much money on yeah. over the years. But there is another read inside you. You just kind of have to find it, and yeah. it's going to feel unnatural. It's going to feel like the same way the skinny light guys, you know, or the the skinny conversational guy that's going to sound like he works at Staples. Right. Would be like if he were to try to push and put a booming voice on, he's going to feel super unnatural. Yeah. It's the guy that has the booming radio voice that he's going to have to reteach himself to kind of just at first just talk it out. Really, it's going to sound unnatural yeah, and like, just but mumble through the, it. the more th the more he can just conversationally chat on on a the, script, the better. The better, yeah. because he's gonna he's at that point, and I'm not talking like DJ radio chat, but in a, a sense, just how would this sound if I were just going to be talking to somebody like else? Like this, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And I was working with a guy yeah. once who had a radio background, and while we were having our meeting, our pre demo meeting, I noticed that. He was so conversational and so mm -hmm. cool and so loose. And he's telling me how it's really hard for him to do that. And I'm like, you know you're doing it right now. You know you've been doing it for the past hour yeah. without thinking about it. He goes, the problem is, Chuck, but that as soon as the front. microphone gets in front of my face, everything changes. Exactly. So that's the only thing. That's exactly. the tool that he needs to he tweak. Needs, exactly. That's the tool. And it's all that. Everybody has it. It's, totally. You, you mean you, you, talk, you wake up, you talk to your wife, your kids, or anybody else in your family. You're, you're gonna you're gonna conversationally yeah. talk to them. Yeah, you, know? you don't wake so, up and go, "Hi, honey, how uh, are yeah. you today?" Exactly. Yeah. So right. it's there. It's just finding that and having that comfortability and doing that behind the mic. Mm -hmm. So yeah. beautiful. Well, it's Thank also you, like you hear the millennial read. Oh, um, yes. Which you know, and I mean, I get that on my spec totally. a lot. You know, so it's almost like for women too. You have that um, okay, millennial read. Like what as an agent. And you're counseling your clients. What do you feel like the millennial me read means? Millennial and raw mm -hmm. are very co they coincide. Mm -hmm. um, a millennial read is gonna is it's gonna really obtain to a millennial. So if you you have to think nowadays with six second pre rolls and right. the attention span, everything is coming off more raw and more real because no one wants to be bullshitted anymore. Exactly. And you know, and that's that's really what it comes down to is, do I feel like I'm getting pushed on, a product pushed on me, mm -hmm. right? And as a consumer, you're, it, it, immediately the doors go up when it's like, when there's no relatability there. Right, right? You know, right. If, I, if I have no interest in something, if they, no one can't, we can't find common ground, I'm really not gonna pay attention. But immediately when you have something that's raw or real or someone who, you know, like I even said it uh, last year in Atlanta, you know, the, the textured weathered voice for a woman is more of a norm now because maybe realistically, maybe she's a single mom or maybe, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So yeah. you kind of have that. And like, she, she's not necessarily right. old. Old, right. not not by any means, yeah. but she, maybe she's been through some stuff and they want a voice that's gonna kind of obtain to that, that maybe sounds like, you know, a young person, but uh, how do I put this in a sense? I, I, um, They've been around the block Exactly, like somebody yeah. who's actually kind of lived a little bit as a, at a young age, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the norm nowadays, too, with society. Exactly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. We've all been through stuff, man. Absolutely, man. Right? man. <laughs> we all have stuff. Absolutely. Uh, what is the most in-demand age demographic in commercials? I mean, realistically, I'd say 30s. I mean, 30s? Yeah, 30s, because 30s to, I mean, even at early 40s, you're, yeah. you know. So for men and for women? Yeah, I would have to say, but then you do in. have some women who sound a lot younger and they're older, or oh, yeah. they're, you have a young, you know, 20s or yeah. mid-20s girl who sounds 30s. Yeah. So right. it does, there is a variation yeah. there. Well, um, let me ask you something, <laughs> be touching on this. So if, if there's a, a, a lady, a young lady out there who maybe sounds older, Okay, but she's but she's not, okay, or vice versa. A much older lady, maybe she's uh, forty eight, right? Oh, or that's maybe, so old, maybe, Chuck. Hold on, I'm just saying older than like the twenty year old, yeah, right? That yeah, is yeah. older. Yeah, of but, course. Or maybe even fifty five, right? But she has a young sounding voice. Should her demo reflect things that are within the age demographic that she sounds like, or how old right. she actually is? Well, realistically, I mean, voiceover, it's it's just like playing cards. You really only sh want to show, you only show what you, you want to show, right? In that sense. Exactly. And, and That's a good one. You know, you, you, you got to get a shirt for that. Yeah, you don't have to, uh, I mean, considering the fact most people are 
doing this now remotely out yeah, of their home right. studios. You can kind of show, you can be whoever you want to be in that right. sense. Um, mm -hmm. Unless you're posting a picture of yourself and your age, you know, realistically, if you sound young, automatically, if you're, all your demos are younger sounding, then yeah, you're going to assume yeah. everybody else. Yeah. Um, right. With demos nowadays, I and we probably will get into this. I don't know. If we, are, we are yeah, going to be definitely yeah. talking I mean, ahead, about demos for sure. But I feel like in today's demographic too, all these short pre rolls. Now, if you watch any like, commercial or anything else or, or anything on YouTube, you're going to have that six second pre roll. Sure. Or mm -hmm. and that kind of goes to my next point of with demos. It's like I got a demo the other day that sent to me and it was like a minute and a half. You know, and producers nowadays, they're I mean the average age probably of producers between you know, 25 and like 32. You wow. Know? They're used to that market. They're used to the, the they short. want to 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. They, yeah. after 10 seconds their attention span, they're like, all right, on to the next. Yeah. If your demo, if you, if your strong spot is maybe 15 seconds in or right. you, you know, in that sense too, you can't have full 30 second spots as a demo. Oh, hell no. You, right. you, yeah. I mean, yeah. and right. if you, if you have a demo that's three spots and they're all variant and they're 10 seconds each, that's really, I think, is like a solid norm. I've even seen guys that are, have five seconds, 15 second demo and f five second spots quick and it's just five seconds and it's just a snippet of each spot. Yeah. But granted it has variation. You're gonna have an announcer, you're gonna have a conversational read, something that kind of show yeah, yeah. A a, around it, right? Yeah. I mean, realistically when I pitch, I pitch off with old auditions. If I were to get a script and you were to read it, right? Mm -hmm. I, and I were to have, you'd have three or four different scripts that day or things come through or casting I had to pitch your name out on. If it was a mom spec, I'm gonna go find a read that you had read an audition for me. Maybe it was for a hospital. Maybe it was something like heartfelt, something that's gonna be, you know, te yeah. teary eyed. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, and the other script, an announcer script. You know, I would go basically go bottom line. I basically try to pertain when I cast to with old auditions, mm -hmm. just because yeah. then so, more so than demos. Yeah, more so than demos, yeah. just because sometimes the demo, if you send that then realistically, not always, maybe they want that mom spec and your demo is very announcery. So exactly. you kind of, right. you're, you're missing the, you know. Yeah, well yeah. that, yeah. hold on, I'm gonna stop yeah. right there because that's what makes a fantastic proactive agent. I know. Because yeah. most agents, I may not know this, but I don't think that a lot of agents would actually get something in and go, you know what, I'm gonna send something that I know they did that would just nail this, rather exactly. than send them a, their Give demo them what that they I want know to does hear. not reflect that. Yeah. It's, so you got their back. Yeah, I mean, realistically, it's like sending something off that you know is not gonna pertain to what they want. Exactly. Why would you send that? Yeah, you that know? makes a lot right. of sense. So right. it's like if you're, and it, it comes down to one thing, we're selling people, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So if I need to sell you the best, I'm gonna, whatever that, that yeah. consumer wants, I'm gonna shade you to to fit that puzzle piece, right? Yeah. So Beautiful. it's like, yeah. I I mean, and that's I think way cast every agent should cast in that yeah. sense. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of sending, I mean, and demos are great to show your ability and to have up on your website and this and that. But realistically, if you do, if you are gonna be making demos going forward, I think if you were to have four different style demos and you were to have just each individual on a website, I think is better than having clumped together. A, a 60 second demo and having four or five different spots throughout, mm -hmm. you know? Because mm -hmm. um, then at that point you're just, and that's what I've been doing lately as far as with a lot of talent on my roster. Yeah, I, that's just, really I categorize, smart. I find five or 10 demos. One's a non three, one's, you know, if it's it's a woman, it's, it's a motherly, or if it's a guy, obviously a dad like yeah. read, um, a relatable read that's gonna be like just down to earth. Maybe an inner thought monologue that yep. comes up. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so these these all different these different styles of reads that I, I see coming out in the spec that they want. You know, an inner thought monologue. It's it actually it's it's a lot. It happens a lot more than you think. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yes. So it's it's definitely something that everybody should kind of see, and it's that's kind of goes back to if you're doing this craft, you should be watching TV all the time. You should be on iSpot. You should be seeing I'm glad you're what, saying that. what yes. the trend is. Yes. There's yes. a trend. And um, just like anything else, it's a market that everybody kind of has to follow. You Absolutely. Know? So, yeah. 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 I mean, because you're, you're, you're watching it. Yeah. I, I, I always tell people that when you watch a spot on television that has a voiceover, <laughs> that spot, that voice actor was directed. They didn't just do it at home mm -hmm. by themselves. Mm -hmm. That was it's a job. They were directed. That's exactly what was asked asked for, right, of them. And it's polished and done. And that's how they need to deliver their auditions. They need yeah. to be that polished and mm -hmm. that good. Whether it's relatable and non-announcery or 
Announcery. Announcery, yeah. yeah. I mean, and retail still plays a big part in this. So yeah. that's another tool on your tool belt. Exactly. As far as doing legal reads and everything else, that's never gonna leave the business. Right. right. I mean, that's always gonna be there. So in that sense, being versatile to be able to hop around from a legal read to a mom read to a, a relatable read to a conversational, it's its all gonna, you're, you should kind of have in a sense of your bearings and know what, you know, when you get a script, immediately go, you know, five seconds into reading the spec, you should know, all right, I know what I'm gonna do on this. This is my that This is my jam. Your you know, because yeah. realistically, there's so many people in this market now, yeah. it's so impacted, and there's gonna be always that next guy who might get his audition in a little faster, a little quicker, right. and the quality might be a little better. Mm -hmm. And you kinda have, your, everybody's kinda in the rat race with that, yeah. but if, I mean, it kinda goes back to anything else. If you're, you work hard enough, and you stay persistent, and auditioning, yeah. it's not, you know, not one or two or three or four auditions aren't gonna, yeah. you know, it's auditioning throughout the whole year and then looking at that year as a whole and, and going, saying, all right, how did, mm -hmm. how did I do? You know, cause you can, it's too small of a sample to yeah. to go two or three or four months and get upset right. about it. Right. It's, it's, it's a journey and it's kind of yeah. one of those things and, and you stay persistent and you stay on it, yeah. you're gonna do well. Going to, to touch back on some things you mentioned, the quality of the audition besides the read, the actual quality of the sound that you guys are getting. How involved are you with your talent to, if you're getting stuff back from someone and the quality of it is just not up to par, I mean, what is your, how do you guys handle that? Um, I mean, it's it's a phone call, you know, and really You actually make that phone call? Oh, of course, yeah. of course. You know, you, you have to let, if, if I'm gonna rep somebody, you have to be full up with them. You know, hey, yeah. this is how it's sounding, this is how it needs to sound to be competitive. And realistically, you can have an awesome read, but in commercial, if you have somebody even were to have maybe a, a lesser or a mediocre read than yours, but the quality's superb, they're most likely gonna, it's, it's what sounds good. So okay. it's like, it's bottom line. Uh, Vince, it's so funny, dude, because I say that all the time, man. <laughs> it's it's like, if there's two yeah. guys, and it's between you and another guy, and the both reads are perfectly great, who do they pick? The one that sounds better, better. Mm -hmm. and it's the quality, and yeah. and and it's it's a shame because some people really they you know obviously over time you you know you're, as your career moves on you yeah. eventually go from an apogee mic and maybe <laughs> to a home studio <laughs> yeah. and yeah. before you know it you, you yeah. David yeah. Kay's home studio yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. exactly but um, I mean realistically everybody should take steps to always try and make sure the quality is good and that yeah. that can formulate just as easily as using an iPhone with two blankets over your head in the closet and maybe you have an Apogee hooked up to it as well, but something along the lines to say, hey, I'm gonna send this to myself, listen to it, does it sound good on my end? Yeah. And now, if it sounds good on your end, that's the, f the greatest way to test. You wouldn't yeah. believe how many people have sent me stuff and you're yeah. like, did you listen to this prior? Yeah. You know, and, mm -hmm. and it may sound good coming out of the iPhone, but usually if you send it to your email on your home computer and you can at least listen to it yeah. and through some sort of speaker, yeah. you'll be able to tell, you yeah. know? And um, it's just kind of kind of goes back to just doing a little bit of homework and taking your time on your auditions. And eventually, you know, I'm not saying buy a home studio right away, but yeah. over time, it's it, you have to put money back into this business to make money. Totally, man. So, and plus, yeah. nowadays, you know, you don't have to spend an arm and a leg <laughs> yeah. to have a broadcast quality studio in your home. It's you so really, true. really don't. Mm -hmm. um, so, true. so thanks for sharing that, yeah, man. That's yeah. really, really cool. Um, okay, Vince. Uh, I want to go. Let's go back a little bit to a little bit about you, and you know, give us oh, a little background. We know that you've had some like odd jobs, you know, yeah. and things like that. That, uh, that. But hold on, and then walk us through, you know, how that started, and then how you actually found your way into voiceover and being an agent. Well, uh, I got out of college in Florida, uh -huh. um, went to Daytona State, and from there, it kind of after school, it kind of formulated into. Should I, I got at a business degree. Yeah. I was like, do I want to move forward with that? And at, at that point in time in my life, I was infatuated with boats. Yeah. I was very, and I've always been mechanic, uh, mechanical in that sense. Yeah. And um, 
went to boat school, got my mechanics degree, and I was going to try to get out and eventually just become a boat captain. Um, like, are you allowed to show the the, the tattoo? I know, the, right? Yeah. I know. I love uh, it because yeah. he was the not Anchors a boat away, captain. Baby. What was it called? Uh, well, a boat mechanic boat in that mechanic. sense. I had my boat boat mechanics degree, and then I was going to go on, and I have you know a, a small small uh, yeah. sailing license. But yeah, we've never had anybody on the show <laughs> right. that's had that degree. Jim yes. Cummings used to wrestle alligators on river boats. On river yeah. boats. There it is. Right? Right, mm -hmm. but look at this. Yeah, right. So I, cool. I, you know, you uh, different. You know, great part of my life. But in that sense, it was like I went from uh, getting out of boat school to realizing that the economy was in a bad position at that time. You know, we're talking like 2010, 2011. Yeah. And I just, I just kind of shot the resume out everywhere. Mercedes Benz hired me, which was kind of a curveball. Um, <laughs> Mercedes Benz. I, yeah, a car company. Mm. And I just mm. I worked for their leasing division for a while, and then um, Audi eventually stole me. <laughs> I worked for them out here, and one day I was at work, and um, they were shooting an Audi commercial uh, at the dealership I worked at. And they the director pulled me in because he basically fired the uh, guy who was just playing the valet. <laughs> And I apparently fit the specs. So, yeah. Um, yeah uh, was, hey, do you have a uh, right? young, uh, athletic, uh, yes. tan? Tan, yeah, I know. Well, yeah, we have him right here. <laughs> yeah, I met. I actually met the director in the bathroom. Um, like, it was well, he was in the restroom. He seemed very upset about something. And I, as an employee, was yeah. like, "Hey, are you okay? Are you yeah. working your salesman, or is this is this?" And he's like, "No, no, no, I'm good. I'm just we're scouting to shoot here." And I was like, "All right," didn't think anything of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Four days later, he's like, pops up in my office, and he's like, "Hey, um, I already talked to your boss. You're gonna do this spot, and I'm gonna pay you some money." And I was like, "Great!" And didn't really think anything of it. And then at that point, I was like, "Maybe I can get into doing just on-camera commercials." I granted, I did not want to become an actor whatsoever. Yeah. Right? Um, really? You had no? No, okay. no, n by any means. Okay. Um, but and I've actually my uh, fiance, her, um, she, her colleague that she had worked with was Trisha's brother-in-law. And so he uh, basically gave, a, I met him one night and he just randomly, you know, pitched me out to her one night and was like, mm -hmm. hey, got this guy, he's a little outside the box, but it ended up working out. I mean, uh, we're going on five years now, so. Wow. Uh, yeah, started as her assistant and yeah. it, from there, the rest is history, so. Yeah, well, I have to say something, <laughs> It's man. a great team over there. Absolutely, I think the DPN made a really, really great choice mm -hmm. in, in, in getting you on their team because I talk to so many people about agents <laughs> and all kinds of stuff within the industry, but every, without me even saying anything, everybody always brings you up. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. not just Mary Lynn, and it's not right. just Dave you know the Walsh. couple of people that you yeah. think do, they do, but there's other people that you don't even know talk yeah. about you that always say, oh man, Vinny, he's such a great guy, and he's so cool, and he's really like, changing the business Jeez. because he's taking <laughs> things, he's taking the whole business by the horns and he's like proactive and he's a go-getter. These are the things yeah. that people are saying about It's the word you. on the street, well, Vince. It's, I mean, that's pretty cool. Which incidentally I, is why you're on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be honest with you, I uh, I just feel like I'm just doing my job, man. I yeah. I just want to try to do the best I can by the people I do take on yeah. my roster yeah. and just kind of go from there. Yeah. Yeah. And in What do you enjoy the most about being an agent at this point? Um, what gets you jazzed? I mean, realistically, it's, it's all it's it's relationships this whole business is relationships it's it networking mm -hmm. and it's it's you know the, the more people you know the more connections you can make and the more things you can get done i mean and it does it, it especially in a, a city like this yeah. you know everybody kind of does know everybody in this business is, mm -hmm. as big as it is it's it is still very small yeah yeah um, it really is and yeah. you know it's just i i just kind of take it one day at a time and you know i everybody apparently knows now there's a there is a lot of hype now is just as far as different platforms being used of course mm -hmm. and and it's just uh it's it's, it's good to have uh, know that i have a solid roster and kind of going into this and going into a, in a time when things are a little bit more unsure than ever before right. yeah, so exactly and, and to put that in a light light way and i think it's just again it goes back to connections it's yeah. me having the right connections with people at ad agencies and yeah. producers yeah. Yeah. And um, just filling up the talent roster. Cool, man. You know, but you know what? I feel like when the foundation is solid, you know, there's going to be ebbs and flows, and there's going to be, you know, when, but when the dust settles, the solid foundation, people, relationships, they will stand. And that's what I choose to believe because yeah. I think, you know, it, there's always going to be disruption. It really will. Um, yeah. But yeah. the foundation, yeah. if you have a solid market. one, it's. 
It's and gonna be there. And look, DPNs had a foundation. Oh, they, my God. oh yeah. Are you kidding yeah. me? So yeah. I mean, in that sense, it's uh, just going off what Jeff's built for forty years. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. You know, his relationships. His he's been in this business for so long. So yeah. mm -hmm. it's, it's ever ever since I've known <laughs> Jeff Danis, which has been like gosh, a long time, like oh, thirty years. Yeah. Jeff, can you believe that? Um, he has been such a straight up business guy that just like. He just knows the business so well. He and he treats the talent really, really well, and he knows how to negotiate strong for them. Um, he's just such a great agent, man. He really, really is. Um, yeah, I got lucky uh, yeah. having him as a mentor, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Well, if you thought part one was good, just mm -hmm. wait till next week to check out part two. Juicy. Because lots more Asian questions coming at you. Yes, and don't forget to leave our comments and show Vince some love below. You guys keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We love you. Thanks for watching. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time for a little buzz. buzz. The O Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo Fit Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosFitRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.